Hi, I'm Ruthie, owner of Defy the Status Quo, and you're listening to the Defiant Business Podcast, your daily 10-minute shot of business knowledge. And today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn for your business. Now, I love LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm very active. Just search my name, Ruthie Bowles. And I talk about LinkedIn to all of the business owners that I meet up with. Now, LinkedIn, normally, when I bring up LinkedIn, it's normally greeted with a kind of, oh, LinkedIn, yes, I need to be on LinkedIn, but I'm not, or my profile's outdated, I haven't updated it in a long time. So it sounds like everybody knows they should be on LinkedIn, but maybe they're just not motivated enough. So this morning, what I'm going to be is your one more person who tells you that you need to be on LinkedIn and you need to be on it properly. So. Why should you be in, interested in LinkedIn? If your business has B2B elements to it, if your entire business is B2B or partly B2B, you should definitely be interested. That's kind of like the, the given of LinkedIn. If you're B2B, you should be on LinkedIn. But even if you're not B2B, if you are B2C, meaning you know business to consumer, you should still be looking at LinkedIn. If you have a cleaning business, you go out and clean. Busy business people could be your tribe on LinkedIn, right? You uh, are also a business owner. It's funny because I actually specifically have someone in mind right now. And when he listens to this episode, he'll know who he is. But you're a busy business owner too. So who could you better empathize with than other busy business people? Uh, so you should definitely be on LinkedIn. Uh, be to see if you sell glasses, like eyeglasses, prescription eyeglasses, somehow that's your business, right? You manufacture them, you, you send them, you make them, whatever. There are plenty of people who wear glasses in their LinkedIn profiles. So see, so that's even direct to consumer, business to consumer, and, and there you are. Somebody needs glasses. Um, even if you structured it and you had childcare, you took care of other people's children for a living, you could definitely make busy business parents, busy LinkedIn parents, your people that you connect with on LinkedIn. Uh, you, and then, so if, if, if that, oh, that one's kind of out of the box a little bit, I don't think I've ever heard anyone suggest that. So I'll say some marketing ideas off the top of my head, but talking about how important it is to have quality care for your children. So that way, when you come home from work, your children are, you know, still getting the right, you know, upbringing, they're training, they're still eating the right foods. So investing in child care can you know pay dividends later so it's, it's a different it's just a different way for you to communicate your message no matter your industry because b2b people are still people and they still need b2c stuff um really interesting stat you can actually this is the first one of the first ones on my linkedin profile infographic that we published last month 40 percent of the monthly active users on linkedin are active every day so you can count on a serious chunk of the monthly users logging in and checking things at least once a day i'm probably like a two or three times per day person on linkedin maybe more it just depends if i post something and i'm getting a lot of engagement then i'll definitely be on there quite a few times that day. And the reach can be really good on LinkedIn. It's back like when Facebook had its heyday where you like something and now everybody can see that you liked it. Um, now that still happens on Facebook to a degree, but on LinkedIn, it's just way more basic. I like something, I comment on something, and pretty much anybody in my feed could see it if they look at the right time. So one of my tips is you need to work so all the groans i got oh i need to update my linkedin you need to update your linkedin profile before you start reaching out to people so if you're an entrepreneur entrepreneur now and you weren't an entrepreneur before or your industry has changed things like that any major significant changes you want to make sure that your linkedin profile is updated so the linkedin profile infographic that i mentioned i'll include a link in the show notes Go check out that and you'll be able to update your profile no problem so i'm not even going to really dig into it right here um always send a personalized invite when you reach out to somebody to connect right you're sending that connection request it's like a friend request on on facebook you're sending out that connection request send a personalized invite as well it could be the difference between you sitting in somebody's invites for a really long time and actually being accepted the people who send me like actual notes just to show that they even read my profile for two seconds will get approved pretty much immediately 
Um, but make sure if even if you're copying and pasting, please make sure that you check it carefully. I had someone say, hey, we're both in content marketing. We're both in the Bay. And, I'm, and I went on his profile and saw he was in San Francisco. So he meant San Francisco Bay. And I'm like, I'm not from San Francisco. And he didn't even respond to apologize or anything. So I was like, I ignored his friend or his connection request. I did not accept it. Um, don't include any links when you send your invite. That's silly. Um, they don't care about you yet. And they can go find any relevant links, or at least they should be able to go find any relevant links on your LinkedIn profile. So they get your connection request, they click to view your profile, they can check out your business, they can check out any links that you've put in your summary, anything. Um, when they do choose to connect with you, do not spam them to death with a link filled message as your initial message. It's, you know, I like to, you know, see where they are. You know, hey, you know, I heard the weather was pretty bad up there, pretty bad down there. How are things? Or, hey, your weather was really nice. Or, hey, I'm, you know, I'm in content marketing, you know, and I'm just trying to expand my network, you know, and thank you so much for connecting with me. If you hear of any, but need, need any content created in X industries, please think of me. Um, I look forward to seeing your posts. Like it's usually something like that where I mention, you know, kind of what I do a little bit. Um, and if they want to talk more, they can. Um, somebody did something for me that was pretty cool. So I want to share it. Her name is Nadia. And she we connected on LinkedIn just last week. And she sent me a voice message just saying, hey, Ruthie, blah, blah, blah. You know, just just a little short voice. I think it was like 18 seconds. Right. Like you could totally get it down to make it even shorter if you wanted. But everybody is going to know that that voice recording is just for them, even if you don't really put anything specific in it. And I just thought that was the neatest thing. So I'm going to start doing that. Uh, pro tip, you could only do that on your phone. So you have to use your phone to send those uh, voice messages that way. Um, you can connect with people on LinkedIn, I think, easier than other platforms. So let's say you want to connect with somebody and they've got like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 followers on Instagram, right? And so obviously, you know, they'll probably, you could probably follow them without any problems, but actually being seen in their comments and stuff is probably going to be difficult because so many other people are probably commenting there if they create content worth commenting on. Um, but maybe let's say on LinkedIn, they only have like 1,000 or 2,000 because they pay attention to the platform, but they don't really like they're not out there hunting, you know, to build a following on LinkedIn. So that gives you an opportunity to stand out. Anytime they post something, you can comment on it, even if you're the only person commenting. Sometimes I think that's even better because if it's somebody that you know you want to talk with, maybe they would be a great partner for your business. Maybe they'd be a great client for your business. Maybe maybe you just want to com connect with them and you don't know what it's going to turn into, but it could be something good. Uh, when you're the only person commenting on their stuff, you really stand out, right? So you can do that with people pages, the profile pages, but you can also do that with company pages. Company pages don't get a lot of attention. And so if you follow them, they'll pop up in your feed. And if it's a company you'd like to work with or work for, so like I'm thinking like freelancers, if it's a company you'd like to work with, then comment on their company updates. Not a lot of people comment on those. And as a result, as a result, it becomes really easy to stand out. So I think LinkedIn and, you know, Gary Vee talks about LinkedIn a lot, um, but I was interested in LinkedIn before he told me to be. Um, no, I probably wasn't, but I, I hadn't heard that Gary Vee said that we should be on LinkedIn. Um, I actually first ran into Gary Vee like as a person, like as a persona online on LinkedIn and I ignored him for a while, but I just actually finished his book and it was great. So crushing it, highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, so LinkedIn for your business. If you aren't B2B and there isn't a clear way for you to market your business on LinkedIn, all the better, because guess what? That means all of your competitors who aren't going to try as hard as you aren't going to do it which means you will be the cleaning person on LinkedIn. You'll be the glasses person on LinkedIn, the person offering childcare because your competitors aren't there doing it. But you know, should you compete on Instagram? Should you still be there? Should you still be on Facebook? Sure, I'm not saying you shouldn't be there. I'm just saying that you should consider LinkedIn as a viable social media platform to generate leads for your business. Whew, yes, I love LinkedIn. All right. That's been another Defiant Business Podcast episode with me, your host, Ruthie from Defy the Status Quo. Don't forget to look for the LinkedIn profile infographic link down in the show notes. I'll talk to you again soon.